and welcome to the next series of videos. In these videos, we're going to be covering the topic of psychrometrics. And psychrometrics are very important for HVAC. A lot of the energy calculations that you're going to be doing in any sort of HVAC environment are going to be related to air, and in particular, real atmospheric air. So when you talk about what's in the air, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in there. There's nitrogen, there's O2, there's other noble gases, CO2, methane, all greenhouse gases, everything you can think of. But for HVAC purposes, what we like to do is really break off all of these things that I just mentioned, and then break off one other component that's of interest, and that component is water vapor, H2O, and so that's important to us. So I'm going to introduce two terms. One term is the term dry air, put that in quotes, and the other group I would say is atmospheric air or moist air. And so if you're talking about dry air, what you're saying is I only have these components and none of the water. And if I'm talking about atmospheric air or moist air, there is some water vapor that is present in that air. So if you've done a physics course or a thermal course, you've probably discussed the idea of an ideal gas, which is a gas or vapor that obeys this law. Pressure times volume is equivalent to number of moles times the universal gas constant times the temperature of that of that air. And what's nice about ideal gases is that it simplifies a lot of calculations. And fortunately for us in the HVAC industry, we are dealing with temperatures from negative 10 degrees C to 50 degrees C or negative 20 degrees F or even further below. It depends on where you're from. You know, if you're in Canada or Wisconsin where I'm from, it can get pretty cold up to 105 in this, this range of magnitude of temperatures. And what we, what we know from experience is that dry air and in fact moist air is an ideal gas and so that's going to produce some really nice results for us in our analysis. One really nice thing that comes along with ideal gases is the fact that if you look at internal energy it is a function of temperature only. It's not a function of pressure, it's not a function of volume or anything else that would be of interest and intensive property of that substance. And I th I think it's interesting that how how did how was this deduced or how was that shown and originally well it was done in an experiment by Joule and he had this box and he insulated it very well. And this is insulation around it. A lot of times we show that as dash marks. And he took a, some experimental apparatus. Now, of course, this isn't exactly what it looks. This is just kind of a schematic of what he had. He had two bulbs here. And then the outside of this, he had water. And he had a thermometer here in, in the water. Thermometer. Thermometer. And on this side, and there's a valve here. On this side, he had air at some pressure, relatively high pressure, and at this side, he had a vacuum. Vacuum. And he let this all equalize out, and then he measured, started with this initial temperature, and he opened the valve. And when he opens the valve, the air goes from this chamber to this chamber, the pressure of that air decreases, and the volume increases. So you had decrease in pressure and increase in volume and he knew 
already assumed that there was no work being done on the system, external work being done on the system, and that we were all insulated here and that there was really no heat transfer going on. And or external heat transfer. And he noticed that you, if you do this experiment, you let, and you measure this temperature, this temperature does not change under certain conditions, of course, and these would be ideal gas conditions. And so he deduced if these properties here are changing, P and V are changing, and you got no function here, no result in temperature, that the internal energy, all that was left is to be a function of temperature. And so that's how he deduced it. And I might do a video where we actually do the math that shows this, but this is the experimental idea behind it of why an ideal gas has an internal energy that's only a function of temperature. And then if you follow that up, and if you know that H is enthalpy is internal energy plus pressure and specific volume, well, we know we're saying this is for an ideal gas, so for an ideal gas we just deduce this experimentally and you could do this some, some other ways. We also know PV is equal to R specific times temperature for an ideal gas, so we have this. Now this is a constant and this is temperature, and so here for an ideal gas the enthalpy is only a function of temperature. U is internal energy is a function of temperature. This never changes, and here we have temperature itself. And so we have U and H. Internal energy and enthalpy are both just functions of temperature, and this makes things a lot easier for us. And so with that, we're going to go ahead in the next series of videos. We're going to use this information and some other relations dealing with ideal gases, and we're going to derive some nice formulas for dealing with properties of moist air. See you in the next video.